In this video, we will describe the cytoplast ridge preservation technique and what can be expected clinically. A few things to keep in mind on the day of surgery. Perform minimally invasive extraction with emphasis on preservation of the buccal plate. Debridement and irrigation of the socket should be carefully done to remove any residual granulomatous tissue. Bleeding should be observed from the socket walls and apex. Decortication of the socket walls may be required if there is insufficient bleeding. At this point, a 70-30 mineralized demineralized allograft or a 50-50 cortical cancellous allograft is placed. A key to this step is to avoid overpacking the graft particles as this will impede the ingrowth of new blood vessels. Fill to the crest or just slightly above. Another key step before placement of the membrane is to observe blood flow into the graft to completely surround the particles. Within minutes, a stable blood clot, primarily composed of platelets, red blood cells, and fibrin, forms within the socket in direct contact with the bone graft particles. When placing the PTFE membrane, careful elevation of the mucoperiosteal flap and insertion of the membrane is all that is required for stabilization. Note that the membrane is placed 3 to 4 millimeters beyond the socket margins. The membrane must be at least 1.5 millimeters from the adjacent tooth roots. The membrane should be flat with no folds or wrinkles. When suturing, a monofilament suture is recommended. Three interrupted sutures or a crisscross technique can be used. Postoperatively, the membrane surface should be cleaned with a Q-tip and the patient should be instructed to do so two times daily. Antibacterial rinses may be used. At the one week follow-up, check for adequate oral hygiene and cleanliness of the membrane. If the membrane surface is kept free of bacterial plaque, there should be no inflammation and the possibility of soft tissue complications is reduced. Sutures may be removed at one or two weeks post-op at the discretion of the clinician. In the first week, the fibrin clot is gradually replaced with granulation tissue, a transitional type of connective tissue. The tissue becomes more fibrous as the presence of inflammatory cells decreases and more collagen is produced by fibroblasts. Ingrowth of blood vessels, also known as angiogenesis, from the surrounding bone into the tissue and graft is seen. Epithelial downgrowth into the socket is prevented by the DPTFE membrane. The membrane surface should continue to be cleaned with a Q-tip by the patient two times daily. Rinses may be used at the discretion of the clinician. The soft tissue adjacent to the membrane should be healthy and exhibit minimal inflammation. Four weeks postoperatively, the membrane is removed. Immediately under the membrane is a dense, fibrous, highly vascular connective tissue. Occasionally, loose graft particles may be seen on the surface of the ridge upon membrane removal. These particles can easily be removed by irrigation or gentle debridement. Starting at approximately 21 to 28 days post-op, granulation tissue is progressively replaced by dense fibrous connective tissue, or osteoid. Formation of new bone can be seen histologically. Clinically, over the next one to two weeks, the mucosal tissue gradually migrates over the osteoid matrix in the socket, as shown in this cutaway view. The osteoid matrix, or woven bone, found within the healing socket upon membrane removal, is gradually replaced by lamellar bone over time. The overlying mucosa continues to mature and progressively becomes keratinized. This process should culminate in six to eight weeks. The woven bone continues to be replaced by lamellar bone over time. Residual graft particles are gradually replaced or surrounded by new bone. Histologically, this is seen as osteoclastic mediated resorption of the particles with simultaneous new bone formation on their surface. At four to six months postoperatively, the mucosal tissue is completely healed over the underlying bone and well keratinized. Minimal ridge resorption should be observed. An advantage of using the membrane in an open technique is the preservation of the soft tissue architecture and increased keratinized tissue width. At this point, the bone should be mature and implant placement with primary stability can be accomplished predictably. The majority of graft particles should have been resorbed, although some residual graft particles may be observed histologically as continuous remodeling takes place. Typically, with allografts, 10 to 20% of the particles remain at four to six months. Some alloplasts and xenografts may take longer, 
as much as 9 to 18 months to resorb and be replaced by native bone. Slowly resorbing materials may be an advantage in larger defects or vertical defects with the purpose of maintaining volume over time.